Welcome inside TD Garden, everybody. My name is Mike Petralia, joined by Sam Packard, Celtics writer for WEEI.com. We were on hand here, Sam, on Friday night for a very significant, very important Isaiah Thomas-led 111-103 win over the Atlanta Hawks in Game 3 of their Eastern Conference quarterfinal series. Really, what other superlatives can you say about Isaiah Thomas other than he was dominant when the Celtics needed him 12 for 24 from the field 12 of 14 from the free throw line 42 points the most playoff points by a Celtic since Rajon Rondo uh, May 30th of 2012 against the Miami Heat in the Eastern Finals it was just quite a night for Isaiah he was Pretty much did absolutely everything tonight, and it was interesting to see this uh, Brad Stevens and the Celtics adjust, really bringing him off the ball and allowing him to use space to create um, more shots. I think the change in the starting lineup by bringing Jonas Jerebko in really allowed Isaiah to attack the paint more, and um, we saw Marcus Smart uh, be kind of the facilitator and Evan Turner be more of a facilitator and allowed Isaiah to come around those pin-down screens and get his shot up, and that's where he's the most effective, and it's actually... Uh, for all those playoff stats we just mentioned, it's actually uh, Thomas's career high um, in all of his career. So it was mighty impressive from Thomas. And like I think the word is, you said is dominant. Yeah, and, and definitely. And I thought uh, you got to give Brad Stevens a lot of credit here. Obviously, Mike Budenholzer, the Hawks head coach, knows him very well, knows he's a very good coach. But Kyle Korver and Kent Bazemore called Thomas real, uh, called Brad Stevens one of the big keys to this game because they were the ones who said after the game, the two players, uh, Corver and Bazemore, that it was uh, Stevens who made those adjustments, bringing Isaiah Thomas flying off screens, and it was hard to keep up with him. Yeah, and before the game, Brad talked about uh, kind of the secondary action. So they needed to drive and kick, drive and kick, yeah, drive and right. kick. And it's talking about because in the first two games, the Hawks really um, pack, packed the paint and made it so the Celtics couldn't do anything. So it's that secondary action and really making sure they had another, um, another play in hand so they could get the ball moving. And that's what opened up the game for the Celtics and the reason why they came out with that big first quarter. And it's a big reason why they're successful. All right. The other thing I think people are going to be talking about about Isaiah Thomas after this game, no doubt, is what was captured on Vines and captured on TV, for that matter. Uh, the elbow that Isaiah Thomas threw that caught uh, Dennis Schrader or Schroeder uh, across the face in the second quarter of this game was it intentional? Isaiah Thomas was asked towards the end of his press availability after this game. No, it was not. It's playoff basketball. I didn't mean to do it. I'm not going to back down from anybody. And then he paused for a little bit and said, and he knows that. So it's kind of hard to read where the NBA is going to come down on this. It was, it was interesting um, that Kyle Korver said that the Hawks were read a letter by Mike Budenholzer, their coach, about what the NBA is going to do to you if you throw a punch in a playoff game. It's a tough situation because if you look at that one vine, it looks like Isaiah really intentionally tried to do it. But in kind of fast motion, it's hard to say. It's the type of thing where if you're the NBA commissioner, you really don't want to suspend the Celtics' best player for game no. four. Uh, and it really kind of set a tone for the rest of the game. We saw, I think, three more flagrant fouls. Uh, Jonas Derebko had a hard foul on Al Horford. It kind of just set chippiness for the rest of the series. And I would expect some sort of fine for Isaiah Thomas, but I don't expect him to uh, be on the sidelines for game four. The NBA wants an entertaining product, and after a 42-point performance, I just can't see how Adam Silver is going to take him off the, uh, off the floor. I completely agree with you, Sam. I don't think they're going to suspend him whatsoever. But I would add to this whole observation about Isaiah and his intensity. He is a man, and he tells us this all the time in the locker room. He plays on the edge. He plays with a ton of emotion. Brad Stevens and all of, the, all of Isaiah's teammates know this as well. But there were a couple of moments in that first half, one in which Sully had Jared Sullinger had to wrap up Isaiah and hold him back from Schroeder uh, and not let him get into it. And there was another moment where Isaiah was called for the double tech and went running after the official. You cannot do this. You cannot lose your calm in a playoff environment. It's kind of a, a tough for Isaiah because I think that intensity actually helps him play better and helps him kind of rise to the moment. But we see we could get in trouble. He's had a number of techs this year, and I think if he gets another one, I think he has 15 on the season, he actually has to be suspended for a game. And I actually think that was Jared Sollinger's probably best play of the game was treating <laughs> right. Isaiah Thomas like a tackling sled and pushing him out of the way. Uh, so it's you want Isaiah playing with that intensity, and you just hope that it doesn't go too far at some point. 
clearly the other big story of this game coming in was the change in the starting lineup. Brad Stevens knew that Jared Sullinger was laboring in this uh, series, certainly in transition D. It was one of the big reasons that the Atlanta Bigs were getting down court and, and spotting open uh, shooters for three-pointers, and the Celtics didn't have anybody on him. So what does he do? What does Brad Stevens do? He takes uh, Jared Sullinger and Marcus Smart out of the starting lineup, replaces them with Jonas Jarebko and Evan Turner. And to your point earlier, thought uh, Jarebko did a great job setting up and spacing the floor. I thought Evan Turner, who had 17 points tonight, also did a very, very good job. I think both of those players, uh, not only their contributions on offense, but on defense, they did a tremendous job switching on just all picks. And I think Jarebko had a number of opportunities against Teague, against Schroeder, just kept on backing down and trying to make them force that shot. And it's kind of one of the reasons why the, the Hawks' bigs struggled tonight. I think Horford and Millsap combined for only 16 points. Um, we saw with Sullinger kind of an inability to meet them at the three-point line. So when you have those faster players like a Turner, like a Jarebko, who can switch on everything and not give up those open shots, it makes a, just shooting much more difficult for the Atlanta Hawks. So what, Sam, the Celtics did tonight was simply hold serve. They needed the win. Yes, it's the first win in Brad Stevens' playoff career. He's now a one for six. He gets rid of that collar, and that's good. But uh, Brad Stevens said it's better than the other feeling. But frankly, we're here to win a playoff series, and we've got a great team we've got to worry about. The Celtics will try to even this series on Sunday night, uh, 6 o'clock tip-off here at TD Garden for game number four before the series. Uh, because of tonight's win by the Celtics, it indeed will shift back to Atlanta for at least a game number five. Again, the final here behind a career high 42 points from Isaiah Thomas. The Celtics get back in the series, beat the Atlanta Hawks by a score of 111 to 103. He is Sam Packard. I'm Mike Petralia inside TD Garden, weei.com.